Let's show you how to hitch up your Habitat to your tow vehicle. There's a lot of things down here to, uh, to work on. On the vehicle side, we have a two inch ball. Um, this is called your hitch and there are different types of hitches that have different types of risers or uh, lowerers so you can attach your ball at the approximate height so that your trailer and your tow vehicle are level. On my truck here, I have a two inch lift here. So we've conveniently have the trailer right over the hitch. Um, to get to this point, there are a lot of different methods depending on if you're on your driveway, if you're on a hill, if you're at a campsite, if your campsite is muddy or sandy. Um, your rear view camera in your vehicle is amazing at getting perfect alignment. Sometimes you need a friend or you need to jump out of the car a lot as you get close and think, I got six more inches to go or a little bit left or right. Um, if you don't get perfect, you can often wrestle this around, but sometimes you can't. If it's in the mud, you can't wrestle it around at all and you have to wrestle your vehicle around. It can be a little bit finicky. <clears throat> this lifts up. Um, there's a bar back here that's sliding back and forth that catches the lip on the bottom of the ball. So when you put it down, you're also sliding a ball down. So if you get over this thing, you start lowering your jack. I'm gonna try to explain as much as I can. When you're lowering the ball on, you want this up. If it's not perfectly aligned, but close to aligned, you can actually drop the trailer on top of the ball and use gravity a little bit because then if I push, it will fall down over the ball. So you lower your jack all the way until this wheel starts lifting up. Generally when you're driving, or always when you're driving, you take this wheel off to give you a, bit, a little bit of more clearance down here. We've just dropped the trailer onto the two inch ball. Now we want to secure the coupler. You push forwards and down, and you wanna get these little teeth to go in this little slot here. It can be hard, so you use uh, your hand force. Sometimes, sometimes a little foot force pops it into place. And if you're on any kind of slope, sometimes it helps a lot and makes it possible to just pull your tow vehicle forward six inches or a foot so that that bar I mentioned before will get around the ball. Once it's down there, we like to lock it in place. Um, this is the pin that held the wheel on the bottom of the jack. Slots through, locks on. Um, if you ever are traveling, you can buy key locks here if you want to be extra secure and no one can steal your trailer. Um, what is next? So that's safety one, couple it up. Safety two, put this pin in so it can't pop open. Safety three, safety chains. There are two chains and on your tow vehicle, there are two spots. You want to take your chains and you want to cross them so that the chain that's on the right goes to the left, etc. And you hook them on to hooks that are near your hitch on the tow vehicle. In some tow vehicles, these chains might hit the ground or in some driving situations. So a way, a sneaky way to shorten your change up is to just twist them up like this. And it makes the links kink up a little bit. And you raise your chains. The last line of defensive hitching is the emergency brake. There's a cable and a carabiner or some other kind of hook that attaches to the same place your chains do, but you wanna run it independently of the chains. Um, it's easy to accidentally have this thing drag on the ground, so you want to shorten it with a zip tie or something like that, so that it's attached here. And if this fails and this fails and this fails, then this will pull, and this little pin pulls out of the mechanism and fires your trailer brakes. Okay, the electrical connections between your habitat and your tow vehicle. All our habitats have seven pin connectors, um, typical in the RV world. The, you f control your running lights, your brake lights, and your turn signals, as well as the brakes. Um, all our habitats are equipped with an auto brake, proportional brake controller, so that when you tap your brakes in your tow vehicle, your trailer is also stopping. There's a key on this, it fits into a slot on the hitch 
on the electrical connector on your trailer so that nothing can fall out when you're driving. As, as part of the tour of your habitat, I want to point out some important legal and practical information. There are labels on all our trailers um, that have the VIN number that identifies your vehicle, that gives you tire pressures and gives you the safe load maximum load ratings you're allowed to have. We wanted to show you the auto brake, which is our proportional brake controller. There's an intelligent box here and there's something that goes on your key fob to adjust and calibrate it. Um, the wireless connection means you don't have to run certain wires through your tow vehicle. Uh, it's a great system. You can get more information on our website on how to set it up under the manual section or at autobrake.com. Okay, for safety, you always want to be driving with the properly inflated tires because improperly inflated tires can go flat and lose their tread really fast, especially in hot weather. Um, you also want to check all the lug nuts. We have the lug nut specs right up here. Um, especially when you first get your trailer. You want to make sure those are torqued to spec. A spare tire is a recommended option with all our habitats. Um, the habitats come with the spare tire mounts. In this case, a crank and a cable that you use the same jack crank you use for the stabilizer jacks. Stick it in this hole, find the key slot, and crank it down. The elements of setting up a safe and stable habitat uh, involve your hitch, uh, wheel chocks to prevent your habitat from rolling downhill and your stabilizing jacks. So before you even unhitch from the trailer you want to get some chocks by your wheels so it doesn't roll. You take the crank that comes with your habitat, you take the slots that are keyed, and you put it at the end of the threaded rod and you start cranking. Our stabilizer jacks come with support pads. Um, in some muddy conditions, you might want to put a piece of plywood or something down there to spread out the weight even more. Stabilizer jacks are made to level your trailer front and back and make a stable walking platform when you're inside. 